Welcome to Canada Hours of Service Training. This module covers the basics. Violations can have a negative effect on you and your carrier. But the main purpose of the Hours of Service rules is to help keep tired or fatigued drivers off the road. Canada Hours of Service Training Basics is designed to cover the fundamentals of Hours of Service regulations and what it means to be regulated. You'll learn the importance of tracking on-duty and off-duty activities which will help you determine if you're safe and legal to drive. After completing this module, you'll be able to identify who the Hours of Service regulations apply to, recognize the purpose of the Hours of Service regulations, and differentiate between on-duty and off-duty activities. And finally, you'll be able to explain how Hours of Service violations affect driver abstracts and carrier profiles. Canada's Hours of Service regulations apply to federally regulated carriers or extra-provincial carriers operating commercial motor vehicles or CMVs. The regulations specify the number of hours you're allowed to drive and work in a given period of time and what you need to use to track, or log, your hours of service. This log is also referred to as a record of duty status. There are separate rules for the two regions in Canada. One that applies to CMV drivers operating in southern provinces, south of the 60th parallel, or south of 60 degrees north. And one that applies to CMV drivers operating in the Northwest Territories and the Yukon Territory, north of the 60th parallel, or north of 60 degrees north. The provinces and territories may also have specific hours of service requirements that apply strictly to them. It's your and your carrier's responsibility to stay up to date on the hours of service regulations that apply to you. The regulations apply to you if your vehicle is a truck, tractor, trailer or any combination of those having a registered gross vehicle weight exceeding 4,500 kilograms, or is a bus that is designed and constructed to have a designated seating capacity of more than 10 people, including the driver. The hours of service rules don't limit how much work you can do, but they do keep you from driving once the limits are reached. In Canada, there are separate rules for two regions, south of 60th parallel and north of 60th parallel. This is Canada Hours of Service Training and you're learning about limits south of 60th parallel. These limits include the 16-hour window, 13-hour driving limit, 14-hour on-duty limit, and the 70-hour and 120-hour on-duty cycle limits. The off-duty requirements make sure you have enough time off-duty between work cycles. They are the 8 consecutive hours off-duty break, 10 hours off-duty per day, and 24 consecutive hours off-duty within previous 14 days. This program is designed to help you avoid operating a CMV when fatigued and comply with the hours of service limits. After completing this module, you'll be able to recognize how fatigue requires you to stop driving, even if you have hours left to legally operate. You'll be able to describe how the 16-hour window is calculated, identify which duty status the 13-hour limit tracks, explain how the 14-hour limit is calculated, identify off-duty requirements, Describe Cycle 1, the 70-hour, 7-day cycle, and Cycle 2, the 120-hour, 14-day cycle, and you'll be able to recognize the restart periods for each. Driving fatigued is often compared to driving while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Your response times are slower, alertness is decreased, and you may fall asleep behind the wheel. If you're sick or tired, tell your carrier and don't drive until you've had time to rest and recover. So let's get into the limits which help to prevent fatigue. The hours of service rules don't limit how much work you can do, but they do keep you from driving once the limits are reached. In Canada, there are separate rules for two regions, south of 60th parallel and north of 60th parallel. This is Canada hours of service training and you're learning about limits north of 60th parallel. These limits include the 20-hour window, 15-hour driving limit, 18-hour on-duty limit, and the 80-hour and 120-hour on-duty cycle limits. The 8 consecutive hour off-duty break rule and the 24 consecutive hours off-duty within previous 14 days requirement make sure you have enough time off-duty between work cycles. This program is designed to help you avoid operating a CMV when fatigued and comply with the hours of service limits. After completing this module, you'll be able to recognize how fatigue requires you to stop driving even if you have hours left to legally operate. You'll be able to describe how the 20-hour window is calculated, identify which duty status the 15-hour limit tracks, explain how the 18-hour limit is calculated, and identify off-duty requirements. 
In addition, you'll be able to describe cycle 1, the 80-hour, 7-day cycle, and cycle 2, the 120-hour, 14-day cycle, and you'll be able to recognize the restart periods for each. Driving fatigued is often compared to driving while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Your response times are slower, alertness is decreased, and you may fall asleep behind the wheel. If you're sick or tired, tell your carrier and don't drive until you've had time to rest and recover. So, let's get into the limits which help to prevent fatigue. Welcome to Canada Hours of Service Training, Record of Duty Status. You can record your hours of service electronically, manually, or by keeping a time record. This program is designed to teach you when each type of record can be used and how each is evaluated during a roadside inspection. It also helps you with planning your trips to avoid violations. After completing this module, you'll be able to describe how to use trip planning to achieve successful time management. You'll be able to explain how supporting documents are used to validate recorded hours, identify when to keep track of your hours using an ELD, manual log, or time record. And finally, you'll recognize how roadside inspection expectations differ between ELDs, manual logs, and time records. A good trip plan involves creating a vision of how the day should go. Experienced trip planners plan for the unexpected. You can know things like the weather forecast, plan detours and road construction, common rush hour traffic in larger cities, and established speed limits. And some things you just can't plan for. There are several details you need every time you complete a trip plan, including your current location and destination, where you want or need to stop, your actual route, how long each task will take, the total trip duration, and finally, the number of hours you have available. You're required to help your carrier assemble supporting documents and turn them in on time. The documents are used primarily to verify the accuracy of on-duty, not driving activities, such as matching up a fuel receipt with your record of duty status. Some can also be used to validate drive time was properly recorded. To be considered a supporting document it must meet the definition of a supporting document in the federal regulations. Welcome to Canada Hours of Service Training, Exceptions. Common exceptions include the 160km radius, split sleeper berth, emergency conditions, adverse driving conditions, electronic logging devices, or ELDs, daily off-duty deferral, personal use, and ferry operations. This course is designed to help you understand which exceptions can be used and when to use them. After completing this module, you'll be able to describe the most common exceptions and what each exception relieves a driver from. You'll also be able to identify which drivers can use an hours of service exception and when. Drivers operating near their normal work location are exempt from recording hours of service entries on an electronic or manual log. If you operate within a 160-kilometer radius of your home terminal and meet other qualifiers, you can use this exception. However, your carrier can require you to use an ELD or manual log. To qualify for this exception, you must operate within 160 kilometers of your home terminal and return there each day to obtain a minimum of 8 consecutive hours off-duty. Your carrier must maintain a record of your cycle, on-duty time, and supporting documents for 6 months. Plus, the record must be identifiable in some way to you. You can get your required core rest break by splitting your sleeper birth time into two segments instead of one segment of eight consecutive hours off duty. If you have a qualified sleeper birth, you can use the exception. Your sleeper must comply with the regulations to use the exception and record sleeper birth time on your record of duty. There are split sleeper rules for south of 60th parallel and north of 60th parallel. And the rules are slightly different for single drivers versus team drivers. If you're a single driver operating south of the 60th parallel, you can split your off-duty time into two periods in a sleeper berth if neither period is shorter than two hours, and the periods total at least 10 hours combined. You must comply with the hours of service limits for the day and work shift in the periods before and after the sleeper periods. Welcome to Canada Hours of Service Training, ELD Basics. Creating a duty status is easier and more accurate when using an electronic logging device or ELD because much of the recording is done automatically. This training is designed to help you stay in compliance when using ELDs. After completing this module, you'll be able to discuss when you're required to use an ELD and identify the items you must have in the cab when recording your hours with an ELD. 
Also, you'll be able to describe how you can reduce unassigned drive time and explain the process to follow when your ELD malfunctions. ELDs increase compliance with the hours of service regulations and reduce fatigue-related crashes. You must use an ELD if you're required to complete a log. However, there are a few exceptions. Drivers who are not required to use ELDs include those operating a rental CMV for 30 days or less and those operating vehicles manufactured before the year 2000. Drivers operating under a special permit or statutory exemption and those operating within a 160-kilometer radius of their home terminal are also exempt from using an ELD. Transport Canada requires the electronic logging devices be certified. This ensures the ELD you use meets all technical specifications. Find a listing of all third-party certified devices on Transport Canada's website. There are several items you must have in your vehicle. At a roadside inspection an officer will verify you have records for the current day and the previous 14 days, the ELD user's manual, an instruction sheet on data transfer during roadside inspections, an instruction sheet regarding malfunctions, and at least a 15-day supply of blank paper logs to be used if the device fails. Welcome to Canada Hours of Service Training, Manual Logs. Every driver required to complete a record of duty status needs to know how to correctly fill out a manual log. This program is designed to help you avoid common logging errors. After completing this module, you'll be able to identify required fields that must be completed on a manual log and prepare a record of duty status using a manual log. You'll also be able to describe how to complete a recap to determine the number of hours you have available before hitting the cycle limits. You might need to know how to complete a manual log if you're exempt from using an electronic logging device, or ELD. But even if you always use an ELD, you must be capable of completing a manual log in case your ELD fails. When completing a manual log, every entry must be legible, be in your own handwriting, and be as current as your last change of duty status. The header information, like your carrier's name and address, can be pre-printed. All other required information must be completed by you. A black or blue pen is usually preferred. Check if your carrier has a policy on what color to use. There's information you need to enter at different times of the day. At the beginning of the day, record today's date and your elected duty status cycle. Many logs have a checkbox for this. Enter your starting odometer reading and plate or unit number of each truck or tractor and trailer you drive. Record your carrier's legal name, your carrier's principal place of business address and your home terminal name and address. Your name and your co-driver's name, if you have one, needs to be printed. And you need to enter your 24-hour period start time if it's different than midnight. This is determined by your carrier and often pre-printed. During the day, you need to complete the graph grid. This is where you indicate your duty status times with a continuous line between time markers. And you need to complete the remarks section, which is the area underneath the graph grid. Use it to indicate the locations of your duty status changes. Most other remarks, such as daily inspections or fueling, are entered due to company policy. However, remarks are very helpful to understand any unique circumstances. Every time your duty status changes, you must enter the name of the location where the change occurred. At the end of the day, you need to enter your vehicle's ending odometer reading and your total distance driving today, minus any kilometers you traveled for personal use. You only need to include your own driving time. Enter your total hours spent in each duty status, which should add up to 24 hours. And lastly, you need to certify the information you recorded is true and correct by signing the record.